Welcome back to Bridging the Gap, and we're going to walk through the park again with Scott Davidson. We need an umbrella these days, though, to walk through the park. <laughs> Well, we need a flotation device. Really. Well, uh, hopefully, we'll, yeah, hopefully we won't need a, bo a boat. <laughs> well, we might. We'll see. We'll see. Well, that's okay. Maybe y'all can expand and have boats for rent to we, use on the We river. would be very creative with our programming. Uh, now, if, for those that remember last year, yes. it was wet last year, right. early on, and then it was very dry. Yeah. So we don't want that scenario. No, but no. it looks like that's what we're going to get, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, we're not in charge. Mother no, Nature that's is. That's right. So we got to be, be nice to Mother Nature nature. Well, we had we left with a question last week. Yes, we did. And it was about John Paul. Yeah. Is there one John Paul? Is there 10? Is what's and what about who is John Paul? Well, I'm sure there's more than the two that we're going to talk about <laughs> that we've talked about. The original John Paul we mentioned was the founder of Madison. Right. And John Paul Park is named after him and and, and the like. So, but there was a John Paul who was executive director of the Lied White Boys and Girls Club. Right. Actually, the Lied White Boys Club at the time. And uh, John Paul and his wife, Sue, John Paul was better known as JP, uh, was in charge of the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, he started his tenure as director in, let's see, I got it written down here, in 57, oh, September of wow. 1957. Right. And was the director in, through December 31st of 1983. That's a long time. It is, and he did great work. He and Sue both did great work, and they were there all the time. And for those that are of my age, or a little bit older, they'll remember JP and some of the times at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and the club was actually originally located in the beach house at Crystal yes. Beach Pool upstairs. Yes. And that's where they took care of all their business. And I, I was reading, reading some stories on it. I guess they only had one restroom. Because it was boys, it was a boys club then. Of course, Sue Paul, she was there a lot. So uh, a funny story is that when she had to use the restroom, all the guys had to get out and JP would block the door to make sure she could take care of her business in private. But uh, the connection between John Paul, the founder of Madison, and the connection of, with John Paul at Boys and Girls Club, he used to tell the kids if they were bad, I read this story, if they were bad or misbehaving at the Boys Club, they would not be allowed to go to John Paul Park, which the kids didn't know it was not the John Paul uh, or JP part, but he did a, he did great, wonderful work at the Boys Club. Now, did you know he was not the first director of the Boys Club? Who was the first director? Well, again, I had to look this up, and I went to the Boys and Girls Club website to find this information. The first director was Arno Walker in 1954. He was followed by Edward Glemkowski in 1955, and he served until John Paul started in 1957 and then Ray Black was after JP and then now Brandy Poling is the current director right. so they've had five directors and and I didn't remember the other two names but folks a little older than I would remember right. uh, both Mr. Walker and Mr. Glankowski as kind of helping establish and it wasn't called the Boys Club at the time it was called the Madison Foundation of Youth again I, I got that information from the Boys and Girls oh, Club website wow. so uh, we appreciate uh, everything that was done in the past to make it a successful program now, which of course is located on the hilltop right. next to the Rucker Sports Complex. And by being a Boys and Girls Club, it gets more funding. Correct. So and it, more kids. Yes. And more activities. And uh, they do a great job and uh, they do serve a vital purpose. And it all started way back when in 1954 with some folks maybe getting together in a room like this and saying, hey, what can we do for the area youth? That understood Whammo. that need, something needed to be done. Yeah, exactly. And they did it. Yeah. So, so uh, that, and, and again, John Paul was very instrumental and served nearly 27 years in that capacity and a lot of great memories uh, for those that spent some time down there. You know, he, if you think about that, 27 years, that would be kids, their kids, yeah. and possibly their kids. You're right, and then Ray followed him and Ray, right. Ray served from 84 until 2018, so well, he was there. Thing. Yeah, so he, yeah. So those two guys together, that's a few generations that uh, the Boys and Girls Club had a major impact on. It, it did, and, and it still does. And so. salute to those folks. And, and I did actually, was at the Boys Club, I served there as a uh, program director for five years. Yes. So, and there's been a lot of folks come through those doors as not just members, but also volunteers yes. or employees of the Boys Club. And they've Club. gone on and, and still serve in some capacity Correct. like you do. Yes. You've gone on to the Parks Department. Yep. And they have an alumni association, which Carl Tyree is part of. So oh, yeah. uh, continue to do great work at the Boys and Girls Club. And again, salute to them. They're going to have to put a ramp in there for Carl. He's, he's never going to leave. No. He's, he's going to be It's good to have stability, fixture. though. Oh, yeah. It's good to have he's stability. He's like that permanent fixture yeah. there. He's yes, going to he retire and... and 
take his retirement yes. out of the club. Yes, he is. Yes, he so, is. So he's amazing. He is. Yes. So now the next thing we've got going up is the oldest park. The oldest park, and correct. We're trying to figure that out, and we think pretty close to. We thought, and I'm still going with John Paul oh, park, park as the oldest one, 1904. Right. But right outside your studios, yes, is the Broadway Fountain. That's right. And many people don't consider it a park. It is a small park. It's a small park. But when was it made? A you know, it, well, it's always been there. That fountain has, but yeah, you know, when not they, always, but well, yeah. But the fountain's been there for many, many yeah. years. So mm -hmm. when did they officially recognize it as a park? The Centennial Fountain was first dedicated in 1886. Ooh. So that predates John Paul Park. Yeah. Did they call it a park then? I don't know. And since it's been recast and, and whatnot, but and there I said it. I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> but so 1886, the Centennial Fountain was dedicated here in our community. Right. It's really the centerpiece of downtown Madison, I think. Uh, if you mention Madison, uh, there's a lot of things, but the Broadway Fountain, a lot of there's weddings there. People oh, go there yeah. and pitch their pennies in and make wishes. I know my little one does, and uh, it's just. It's, it's right there. So 1886. Okay. Centennial Fountain was dedicated. We're gonna, it's a park. It's a park. But so. the fountain was dedicated, not, not well, as a but park. But there had to be... Something in there. Yeah. Well, well, we'll look into that. So technically, I don't know if it's a technical park, but technically in it, the, uh, the uh, definition of a park, but... 1886. 1886, Centennial. that's good enough for me. Yeah, there you go. So now then, what about applications? Applications. It's sign-up time, and oh we've boy. been signing up for a little while now. Uh, the deadline is quickly approaching. The deadline is March 27th. And which, now we need to remind them, Yes. spring break is in there. Yes, yeah, spring so break is that week sign of... Sign up before. Yeah. So March 27th is the deadline for our baseball and softball program right. for 7 through 12-year-olds. And then our workouts actually start the following week. We have our baseball workout on Monday the 30th, and our softball workouts are on Tuesday the 31st. And then we draft our teams, and then the teams start practicing. So get your youngsters signed up. Applications, right. again, are all over the place. They've been in the schools. They're online. Uh, go to the City of Madison website, and you can find it on there, uh, and get those turned in. $50 to participate, and uh, if, that, if that's a hardship for you, Please sign your kids anyway, because we don't prevent any kid from playing that can't pay. Everybody's involved in our program, so right. uh, get your youngsters involved. And we're looking, like I said on our last program, we're looking for a big boom because we're getting the word out earlier in in different ways, just like this program. And we want more kids. The more, the merrier. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the better the program. Exactly. You know, if you have enough kids to play and you have enough to switch in and out, then everybody's fresh and can play, and they don't get too tired or frustrated. And we work with the local travel teams. We our program is a Monday through Friday program normally, unless we get a lot of Mother Nature taking over but we go Monday through Friday so the kids that play travel on the weekends they can still do both so right. we encourage those kids to be part of our program and and I would encourage if you're a pitcher on your travel team maybe play shortstop or someplace else on the rec team because there is a place for recreation baseball and softball and right. the place to find it is Madison Indiana yeah That's so get involved I, sign I, them up I think it's great now with all these kids signing up you also need people to coach coach yeah. we've, we've already had our first coaches meeting which kind of give me an idea of how many people I still I have to go encourage to come <laughs> and coach uh, there is a spot on the application where you can mark if you want to be an assistant coach or a head coach if you put assistant then I'll probably call and maybe say would you like to be the head coach uh, but uh, yeah the more kids we have involved the more teams we have involved the more coaches and volunteer right. coaches we need and we we've, we've had a really dedicated crew over the years and we've been blessed with a lot of great folks coaching both baseball and softball and, yeah. and we're looking for the same thing this year well that's great I'm sure you get plenty of yeah. people to and call contact me, me directly uh, my my city cell phone is 812-493-9840 leave a message and I'll get back with you or leave your name down at the park office and uh, I'll give you a call and we'll get you involved awesome that's yeah. great mm -hmm. now what el what else do you need this week what else do we need well do you need? We we've already sent out a lot of letters right for sponsorships, yes. Uh, for folks, and uh, and it's an extra way to help offset the cost of our program. Fifty dollars doesn't cover the cost of everything that we do, for field maintenance, equipment, 
and, and the like. So we, we take sponsorships. And uh, since I've been there, the sponsorship programs have been in place, and before that even. Uh, to sponsor a team, it's $300. That gets your name on the shirt, name on the schedule. We mentioned you know, on the PA. And also at the end of the year, we get your sponsorship plaque. Right. I come from a background radio, so I know you've got to take care of people that sponsor you. So uh, we give you as much bang for the buck as possible. So $300, sponsor a team. Get your name on the shirt. Uh, also, if you'd like to sponsor a banner, put your banner up there. We hang them along the fence as you walk up to the complex, right. and you, everybody's there. Uh, that's $300. If you'd like to do both, we give you a little discount. We're saving you money. Uh, $500 for the combo for a team and a banner. Right. And we got a lot of folks that do that as well. And they're businesses, individuals, churches sponsor, school sponsor. So if you're interested and didn't get a letter, it's not because we didn't think about you, but give us a call and right. we'll get you involved. Another way you can sponsor is sponsor a kid. Like we said before, we don't turn anybody away. Uh, if they can't afford to pay, they still get to play. Uh, $50 to sponsor a kid, or you can do a half a kid. You know, twenty-five dollars, whatever's worked for your budget, right. and that include that way individuals can do it, or uh, families or businesses. And we've already received several that wants to sponsor a kid, which is awesome. And it's anonymous. I mean, we don't. Uh, when the kid signs up, we don't point those kids out right. that, that need the assistance or, or the like. Right. But we do kind of thank those that do give the extra money for sponsorship. In fact, I was a, at a business just the other day that said, "Hey, we're interested in sponsoring a couple kids for the program. That's awesome." Whatever you can help us out, it's helping the kids out, right. helping the program out, and that's what it's all about. We're all about the kids. Well, so there's a, a number of ways you can help. There's there's several entities yeah. in the community that take care of the kids, yes. and I think you all are all doing a great job. Uh, we're we're, we're trying, and I know other groups are trying too. So. Yeah, this yeah. is great. Yeah. Was there anything else we got to tell them today? Are we good? Uh, well. Yes, we got to get to our oh, our whatnot and section whatnot. and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> which I already mentioned well, once. You already said it. We're, are we done? <laughs> yeah. You didn't give us the answer. Well, what not? I did what not. But okay. you know, a lot and what not and what not. It's time for you know, fifty dollars to play in the baseball softball program. For some, right. that doesn't. It's not a lot. For others, that is quite a bit. So to play baseball, though, you need equipment. Oh, definitely. And we provide batting helmets and catcher's gear and catcher's mitts right. and some baseballs, but. Some kids need cleats. Yes. Some kids need gloves. Some, Some kids need, need bags. Socks. socks. Well, we have, over the years, people have donated to us. Giving. This is a great community. They give back. It's awesome. But when their kids outgrow their shoes, instead of just, they've been donating them to us. Right. So we have quite the selection of various sizes of cleats down at the Brown Gym. We also have gloves. We have some gloves that people are they're done using. Right. We actually have some bats. They're not brand new bats, but they're bats. They so still work. They still work. You can't I, you gotta make them work. Always yeah, works. Exactly. <laughs> so if, if your youngster if is looking or if you need some cleats or gloves or bats, we will try to have those at the workouts. Right. But if you just like to contact me or somebody at the Brown Gym, you can come down and see those things right. and get them. And try them on and make sure they fit right. And, and again, there's some great families in our community that give back to the program. And like I said, once they outgrow the cleats, they say, hey, can you use these? Absolutely. Right. So if you're looking for cleats and gloves and bats, and if you look at the prices, you're probably going, oh, my goodness. Well, we can take care of you. Most families have more than one child. Correct. And I can imagine. We, had, we only had two, but still, Correct. trying to outfit different kids and be able to afford it, that even if you can afford, yes. it's still expensive. Expensive. So, so we got some cleats, we got good. some gloves that, that they need a good home. So why can't your home be the good home there for go. the cleats, gloves, and like I said, even some bats. Right. And one other whatnot we want to pass along, we mentioned the Brown Gym a lot. Yes, we do. Did you know that you could actually rent the facility for, we talk about games all the time, but you could rent it for birthday parties? You can rent it for reunions. You can rent it for whatever you, your heart's desire down there. Now, there is a bit of a cost. Uh, right now, the, the normal fee is $50 an hour, which is oh, that's it's not, not bad. bad. Oh, no. uh, you get use of the basketballs if you need them or, or volleyballs or you can play wiffle ball in there. <clears throat> now, but, here's a question. Okay. If you rent the gym, mm -hmm. do tables and chairs come with it? We have tables and chairs there. That's part of it. So, yeah. Uh, so if you're looking for a place for your youngster, and there's basketball goals obviously right. down there. How many uh, people does it seat uh, if you put out the chairs and tables? More than one. 
I, I, I knew you wouldn't know that. Well, I actually, it's I'm probably trying. Probably about 200, I, I would think. For tables and chairs? Tables and chairs on the court. Actually, I think there's a sign that says occupancy is like eight or nine hundred. But how many could? But we're not going to put that many tables and chairs now. <laughs> we don't have that I'm many. I'm thinking tables. sitting at a table with chairs. We could we could probably easily accommodate two to three hundred people. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of. And some might have to sit on the floor or play musical well, then, chairs a little bit. And then you have the bleachers that go Correct, up. Correct. Yes. But. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it, it's another option. I mean, a lot of folks are looking for places, fun places, where you don't have to clean up your own house. Oh, Just come on down, yeah. decorate the way you want, and, and, and use the Brown Gym for your events. So $50 an hour. $50 an hour, and uh, okay. if it's a not-for-profit, that might even be a little bit less. Talk to Dave Stucker. He's the Barks Director. He's in charge of negotiating the fees. <laughs> So anyway. Just pass the buck. Pass the buck, exactly. So, pass the buck. Awesome. Well, we've got everything done except one. Yes. And what is that? It's our thought for the day. Thought for the day. Yeah, and again, it's not my thought. It's not an original thought. That's okay. See, he at least knows where to go get a thought. Yeah, yeah. And I, there's a lot of thoughts out there. A lot of people well, have a lot of thoughts. At least you know where to go get them, Yeah, though. yeah. And this is a pretty good one. <clears throat> I don't want to mess it up. Okay, are we ready? Which camera should I look over it, here? You can look at that okay. one. All right, here we go. It's not about being the best. It's about being better than you were yesterday. I it's like not, that. yeah, it's not about being the best. It's about being better than you were yesterday. Worry about yourself. Worry about, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, so just be better tomorrow than you were today. Strive to be that. Now, so. we were talking about the pool. Mm -hmm. That was one thing we were talking about earlier. Yeah. What are some of the things that parents or kids should remember to bring to the pool with them? When the, when the pool opens? Yes. Because the pool doesn't it's have any water. Yet. Well, it doesn't have any real It's got rainwater in it. Uh, obviously, a towel so you can dry yourself off. Uh, we do have some suntan lotion down there, but if you're susceptible and you're going to be there for more than two or three hours, you probably need to have right. some lotion, some tan lotion. Um, and maybe bring some dollars to go to the concession stand. And a flotation device if you need one. Correct. And for those that don't float very well, which is, is me, I don't float very well, uh, bring a flotation device. Something, you know, those little inflatable things right. that, you know, for, for you that you want to relax on. Good luck relaxing on it because there'll be people splashing around you. Or for your kids, put those little flotation things on their, their arms. Right. And also, don't forget, you will not to lose your season pass that you be, have already purchased. Right. Should have already purchased. Through okay. the end of this month, $40. And then with the little bitty kids, you actually have the ability. For, there, sometimes there's uh, the uh, the pool diapers. You have yes. those available. There's pool diapers available. I think they're a dollar a piece. Don't right. hold me on that price, but yeah. there's not very. So if you forget, oh, just slip that pool diaper on. And, right. Yeah. And then remind your kids to go to the restroom, yes. not in the pool. Correct. The pool is not the restroom. <laughs> we don't want to see any flotation things in no. the pool. We have we have restrooms in the bathhouse. Right, yeah. right. And there's some Why other things. Why do they things. call them restrooms? I don't I know, because you're resting, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but you also need to remember, you know, don't do certain things in the pool. Correct. You know, just there's a lot of things. I saw a lady shaving once, uh, and you don't shave in the pool. No. Um, Try not to splash too many people that don't want to be splashed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, when the when they're having the um, swimming lessons, yes. Make sure you remember you need to be out of the pool by the time their lessons start. Correct. So if they're asking you to get out of the pool, they're not being mean. They just they need to start the lesson. And before. also when the lifeguards blow the whistle to get out of the pool, oh, that mean one. that doesn't mean in five minutes or your own sweet time. That means I'm out of the pool now. <laughs> Something serious. Something serious. Get out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Go rest, go to the concession stand, get some popcorn, nachos and cheese. There you go. And then wait to let you go back in. Correct. So, or and lay out for a and while. And there'll be ice cream. We're talking about the pool in February. Uh, in you, March. Well, it's not gonna be long. They're good they need to know all this because right. they're gonna show up to the pool and they're not gonna have a towel. <laughs> they're not gonna they're not gonna have a flotation device. They're gonna think you already have one and they'll be like, Oh no. But yeah. see if we keep telling them now. And you say know. swimsuits are already on sale. Yep. Unbelievable. I know. <sighs> well it was funny, they had uh, Halloween and Christmas up at the same time in the store, and then I noticed they had Valentine's Day and Easter up in the store at the same time. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, the seasons are blending over. I guess. Thanksgiving gets skipped. There's not many people buying big old inflatable turkeys anymore, I guess. <laughs> Well, no. To me, Thanksgiving is like the launch for Christmas. Yes. That's when I put up my Christmas it is. tree. Thanksgiving Day, put yeah. up the Christmas tree. Or That's go shopping. Ugh. No, I don't. I'm not the shopper. Yeah. I'm not the shopper. But 
Yeah. I don't think I'll ever do it again after this past year's experience. <laughs> That's another You're day. Talking about That's Black a story Friday? for another. No, is no is like Black Thursday night. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Ugh. I, I can't, I'm not going to fight people over no, stuff. It, I had yeah. a little old lady take something out of my cart once when I was younger. I went yeah. on Black Friday. Yeah. And this little is literally taking stuff out of my cart, and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to wrestle this woman for my, my stuff. <laughs> and so it I just put my hand on it, wouldn't let her take to it. To me, saving I a couple of dollars store. is not worth it. No, no, I'm with you. No, let them, let them clear yep. out and yep. what's left over. If it's still there when I go shopping, it's meant for me to buy. That's if it's right. gone, guess what? You didn't need it anyway. Sorry, mark it off your list. <laughs> I just I don't go. Or buy it way earlier. So I don't know. Gosh. Or no. buy it after Christmas and then That's buy it for better. a year. That's what I do. Yeah. Starting two weeks after Christmas, I start shopping yeah. for the next Christmas. We've got plenty of wrapping paper if you need some, by the way. Well, I try to have mine done by we, we buy November. A lot. Um, We've got a lot of wrapping paper. <laughs> well, I remember that. And I'm boxes. Like... <laughs> need boxes? We'll, we'll borrow some. <laughs> Davidson Fundraiser. We're going to sell some boxes. <laughs> Now, anyway. you personally have the boxes or the park has the No, boxes? no, I no, this is the Davidson fundraiser. Oh, that's a different program. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's not a walk through the park. That's the walk through my barn. No. <laughs> a walk through the barn. Well, maybe we just need to clean out your barn. Yeah. Okay. Amen to that. Yes. Well, we're oh. really glad you stayed and watched a walking in the park yeah, with right. us. So we're gonna be back next time and next the next visit, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a list of all the jobs that are gonna be available with the parks department. And you can apply for those, and then uh, you can see which ones are up and what you would want to do. Some of the kids would want to volunteer. We'll for give those. you. We'll give you a. I don't think they'll volunteer. Oh well. But, uh, <laughs> if they want to volunteer, that's great. But we'll have they a job descriptions. I'll read through the job yes. descriptions of things that you might be interested. In. And my suggestion to you, if you are applying for a job in the parks department, where it says position, don't put any. More specific, the better. Yes. That way I know you're really, or whoever's looking at those, knows you're really interested. Right. And, and start with your favorite yeah, first. Yeah, favorite. And then, exactly. And then go, if you need to write them all, if you want to say any, then write them all down, but yeah. in the order that you want them in. Yes. That helps us out a lot. Yeah. That's the toughest part of this job, by the way, deciding who to hire and who not to hire. Because there's a lot of people that apply for jobs. So There, there are a lot of people that yeah. applied, and then they have to be able to handle the kids. Correct. And all that that goes with it. So Yes. Right. Well, cool. All right. Next time. That's next time, though. That's not this time. That's nope. next time. Next time. You're going to see the whole description. You're going to find out what's up at the park and what you can do and yes. where you can fill in. Exactly. And get paid. I hope we feel better, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes. Nobody knows I'm ill. Oh. <laughs> you do <too> now. <laughs> Put on a good face. Anyway, as always, we thank you for watching.